the first real uh, professional experience I had after leaving college was as a professional athlete. And uh, I went to work for the Los Angeles Rams in L.A. in 1962. And one of the things that happens uh, in Los Angeles is that I got exposed to the entertainment business and uh, ended up uh, working in a couple of films, one of them uh, a John Wayne film, and, and enjoyed that tremendously and realized that there was going to be an opportunity maybe to do something like that after I left football. And I knew that NBC uh, and actually CBS and ABC, what we were talking to all of them, uh, wanted me to at least talk to them about doing some broadcasting work. And when I eventually was able to get a contract signed with NBC, I asked them for the opportunity to also do some acting. So that set the stage for then an opportunity to, um, to go and visit with Michael Landon. Hey, gentlemen. Look at me, I'm out the My initial exposure to Little House really was uh, a learning experience, and, and I arrived with very little, precious little training. I was, uh, I was wondering if I could have a, have a few... Amid all the excitement, there was a sudden realization that, uh, that maybe this wasn't going to work. Uh, and it really came to a peak when I got the first script. And I knew that Michael had written some scripts, basically, for Victor French. I'd just soon be drunk as drowned. And when Victor left, I mean, he, those scripts were still in play, and suddenly I was being asked to do what Victor French had done. And so... I read this first script, and I think I had more lines than Michael did in the first script, and it just scared uh, scared me to death. And, and I, uh, I called Michael, and I said, I need to come in and talk to you. And I went into his office, and I said, Michael, I'm not afraid to do this, uh, but there's one thing I don't want to do. I don't want to make a fool out of you, and I certainly don't want to make a fool out of myself. And Michael looked at me, and he said, Merlin, if I didn't think you could do it, I wouldn't let you do it. Well, I mean, he just lifted the load right off my shoulders, and that's all I needed as a starting place. Coming out of uh, professional sports gave me some real advantages as I moved into acting. For example, I could hit marks just like that. That was never a problem. This ain't exactly what it looks like. Uh, I had control, physical control of my body, and I felt comfortable. You know, I could move around the set comfortably. I could, you know, uh, I loved the stunts. I think the stunts were my favorite part of, the sh of any show that I did. And, and I uh, enjoyed that part. Maybe you say that is action. The most difficult thing was to be able to turn my emotions loose. Because if you turn your emotions loose, on the football field, you get tossed out of the game, and you're not any good to anybody. So when I got on the set, and we started to do things that required releasing the emotions, it was very difficult for me. What we're talking about. The wonderful about. thing about going to work now, with a cast and crew like we had on Little House was that I could tell them, and I did, look, I need your help. I'm not a professional actor. <laughs> Yahoo! Come on, let's go get her! And if you see me doing something wrong, grab me, take me off to the side, and tell me what I've done wrong and how I can change that, how I can do it right. Oh. Lord, a fighty. Hey, why don't you quit trying to work till that back of yours heals up? No, it's gonna be all right. Sure you'll be all right. That's why your mom... One of the funniest inside. things was uh, we had a scene where I had a bad back. And, uh, and the, to cope with the pain, Jonathan Garvey was having to take a little bit of the sauce and uh, had put the, put the bottle down into the water barrel. But, uh, I was supposed to take the, take the cork out with my teeth, and uh, yeah, it was <laughs> Michael. Michael spent some time training me how to drink out of the bottle. He said, now, this is the way we want you to, want you to do that. <laughs> so uh, it was... Uh, it was a piece of work. He didn't have any pretensions about being an actor. Some people, you know, just if they get a part, then they 
assume they're an actor. <laughs> but he would never do that. You know, he was just very down to earth. Can't help. Just help, that's all. I ain't no fool. It only takes one man to drive a wagon. Got me some errands to run in town. I think the high cost of being right was one of my favorite episodes in the show. Uh, and I remember um, how much of my own life really kind of crept into that show because I'm looking at relationships and looking at husband and wife and husband and children and realizing how easy it is to get into trouble uh, by being too proud to uh, to tell the truth and and to allow your feelings to uh, to be verbalized and how quickly you can find yourself uh, behind the eight ball and and even beyond redemption unless you find a way to get things back together just how much do you plan to put that child through Alice I, I... Jonathan, whatever your reason is for coming back, you've got the right. This is your house and your land every bit as much as it is mine. But I want you to know that once that judge gets here, it's all over between us. For all time to come. Virtually every show had a theme, uh, had a story, and, and had a point to make. And it didn't take, I mean... Michael told me once, he said, we're not here to fool people. <laughs> we're, we're here to tell them stories. And the stories are real stories. There, you see? I never said you're crazy. You just said I said you were crazy. I didn't. You did, too. I said you said. I said that you never hear what I say. Well, I'm hearing you now. Then what did I say? You said I'm crazy. <laughs> Charles, I don't see nothing funny. And this was a, a very positive episode in the sense of, of being able to say to people, look, uh, don't fool around with the people you love. Tell them how you feel, even if it's, even if it's something they're not going to like. At least get it out on the table, get it talked over. And uh, that, particular, that particular episode really uh, did have a, an impact on me. <laughs> Mr. Garvey, I'm going to concur with the general consensus. Your wife did not tell you you're crazy. But I am. <laughs> I don't know if you really know how much that crop means to me, Lord, you not being a farmer and all, but... Jonathan. Hersha Paraday played Alice, my wife, on the show, and she was a delight. I mean, uh, she had had all of this experience. Land sakes, you'd think you'd never had a crop before. Well, I ain't never had one like this before. She was another one that, that occasionally would make suggestions to me, and I, and she was she was she was a little more reluctant than some of the other people to do it. But at the same time, uh, I was very careful to to let her know that I <laughs> I said you know, I'm kind of a an unguided missile around here. I mean, there there are going to be times when I get off the mark, and don't hesitate to pull me back. And she was great to work with because she was so. Uh, not only was she incredibly professional, but she was so much fun to be around. But after supper, I'll, I'll go over to the Ingalls place and tell Albert that Andy ain't going to be working with him anymore. Oh, I loved Men Will Be Boys. Uh, in fact, it had come out of a conversation, a long conversation I had with Michael about uh, some ideas I had about a, a show. And uh, it, was, it was fun because uh, I had taken it just so far. Jonathan, I think that's it. And then Michael could put the cap on it. Put the boys through something like you went through. You mean kind of like a test? Sure. But you know that road to Sleepy Eye. Well, that winds around some of the roughest country in the state. It was such a delight because we all have the tendency to feel like we've got all the answers. And so here were uh, two fathers... Uh, talking back and forth, knowing exactly how things should be. You know, this is what the boys should do. This is what they should do. I think that's downright mean. Let's do it. Yeah, let's. 
<laughs> and then we were sure that we were putting them on an experience that was going to help them grow up. And of course we wanted to see because we knew that they weren't going to be able to do it and we were going to have to rescue them. I sure would. Oh, no, Andy. We've been given too much already. They don't look like they're in trouble to me. Well, we were the ones that ended up needing rescuing it, and we're absolutely miserable in the process. Well, go on! Well, I still got my temper. Hey! You, you, you're wrong! It was about learning and understanding and love and trust and allowing people to grow up, allowing people to grow. I mean, there were all kinds of wonderful lessons in that, as well as a great many belly laughs. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun show to shoot. We don't have any proof, but we got all the way there and back. And we picked up the letter, too. Yeah, but we lost it. I lost the letter. One of the things I really liked about Little House was working with the kids and uh, uh, when uh, when I got a chance to work with Pat Laberto, uh, he was just such a sweet young kid, you know, just obviously bright-eyed and so eager to learn and wanted to do everything right and uh, you keep scrubbing on it early wood. on, in fact, during a good part of the time that we were working on the show, his father was quite ill, was very ill. Uh, and because of that, uh, he wasn't getting that arm around his shoulder that, that he was used to having at home. And, and uh, quite often, he'd, he'd be on the set, and he would come and snuggle up and wrap one of my arms around him, which was, which was an easy thing for me to do. Because uh, in some ways, uh, you know, I could feel a real kinship to him. I could really feel the, you know, not only feel the need, but it was easy for me to uh, to share some of that emotion with him. And it was a very, very emotional connection that I had with him as not only a father figure, I mean, he's playing my father, but he was very fatherly. I mean, his daughters and my brother and I and his son were all friends, and it was a very comforting presence to be around. Mrs. Olson, mm -hmm. I'd like a word with you. Certainly, Mrs. Olson Bobby. was one of my favorite characters on Little House. Uh, Catherine McGregor was such a delight to, to work with and to be around. And uh, uh, yeah, she, had, she had created this marvelous character that just was, was wacky and far out and, and uh, a character that we all just absolutely loved to hate. It, it reminded me so much of, of Howard Cosell from my football days. You know, here's Howard Cosell winning most adored and most hated broadcaster at the same time. I mean, and, and Catherine was kind of that way, too. I mean, there were, it, you loved her because she was such a juicy character, but at times you absolutely hated her because she carried things to an extreme. And, and she was so, she had all these wonderful pieces of, of relationship going and just trying to squeeze everything that she could out of them. And she did. Got on it, maybe borrow some more. Like stealing. Mr. Olson, uh, Richard Bull was, I mean, uh, you, you, you have to think? smile when you think about him. If, if you went off to Chicago without me, don't you think they'd be just a little bit shocked? Only if I came back, Harry. Accepting that kind of browbeaten role and finding a way to, to make it work and finding a way to get the payoffs when for? he did... Oh, get his way or get his comeuppance, which occasionally happened for him, and you were always, you always wanted to applaud when it happened. But a marvelous actor and, and a totally unselfish actor, and I think that's one of the things that characterized so many of the people on our set. Congratulations, Nels. You'll get your reward in heaven. Well, I hope you're right, Reverend, because it's going to be hell on earth when I get home. <laughs> I have a great... Richard Bull's story. I, I'd gone to Russia for NBC to do some work uh, prior to what we thought were going to be our broadcasts of the 1980 Olympics. And I'd been away from home for about uh, two weeks, and I was exhausted and sick and just wanted to go home. I finally got out of Moscow, and they tell me I can't go home. I've got to go to London because we're going to edit and voice over all the work we've done. Uh, my wife and I were in London, uh, which we are frequently to see shows. And uh, we ran into Merlin Olson. 
and he takes one look at me and realizes I'm in bad shape, comes over and puts his arm around me and had his wife with him, and he said, come with us. We're going to go have breakfast. Well, I mean, after a few hours with Richard, I was rejuvenated. That was a very, a very pleasant experience. Somebody put him right on that street at the right moment for me. The most difficult episode was the one in which uh, uh, my wife died and the, we lost Mary's baby. I mean, uh, uh, the one thing that, that I couldn't learn to do was to separate uh, on screen emotion from actual emotion. Promise me, Doc. No pine box. Something pretty. So if, if I was playing uh, pain. I felt pain. And uh, that was a two part show that literally drug me down to where, I mean, I would come home and I just crawl in the front door because I was so beat up from, from having to put myself through that, that totally depressing uh, kind of experience. I mean, it was painful. It was honestly painful for me. I think one of the uh, bittersweet moments of working on Little House was uh, when Michael had decided that we were going to spin off uh, uh, Father Murphy. And in order to do that, he really had to separate the characters, had to Jonathan Garvey and Andy had to basically leave town. And, and uh, uh, it was... It was, it was kind of hard in a way because I knew that that was a relationship that uh, uh, was only going to be occasional from, for a short time. But I was also excited about the opportunity of, of, of having my own show and getting to Sleepy Eye was just the beginning. <laughs> Things got pretty exciting after that. Hey, that crazy Mahoney kid's holding up the bank! When I look back at the opportunity I had to be a part of Little House on the Prairie, um, the word unexpected pops into my mind because it was not the kind of thing that I would ever have anticipated having an opportunity to do. And yet, as I look back, it is without doubt one of the most enjoyable, one of the most uh, pleasant, and one of the most rewarding chapters in my life.